dead born again individual next to you is the god carrier is god undercover yeah so if they Ooh, speak to you god undercover i like that <laughs> oh how is having kids oh my gosh how is having kids oh it's amazing flowers and roses oh. my folks keep calling me like what are you what are you doing about your life you know like what is the plan i don't got a plan i don't know why you guys are asking me i just want to breastfeed hi guys and welcome back to my channel um it's been a long time since we've did we've been since we've done our one of these videos and so many of you have been requesting for this videos see i've told you so many people have been just requesting yes yes so we're back by popular demand we're popular demand i by my valiant efforts to get you back on the screen well because you're always so busy sorry sorry you couldn't meet the let's just leave it at that yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want us to talk about the power of thoughts and how important it is to have the right kind of thoughts number one and to be able to establish the different kinds of thought processes because often people usually think that you know what um, if I've thought about something or if I have a thought it's mine number one mm -hmm. um, so let's talk about the origin of thoughts okay what kind of thoughts are they are there and where do they come from uh, various sources of thoughts mm -hmm. um, First, I'd like to just, let me just give the general picture of how thoughts affect the person. And then I tell you the source of these things come from because it will take you back to where I've come from. Okay. So generally, a thought leads to an action. A repeated action leads to a habit. Um, several habits make up a person's character and um, several kind of characters in a certain mixture from a person's personality mm. and um <clears throat> and behavior and generally who they are yeah so there are, there are ways that we get our thoughts the first kind of way is we go to the most basic before now let's start how a human being is formed mm. genetics there are some forms there are some forms of thought that are passed down genetically there is for example anger can be passed down from one person to another you find that this person is usually an angry person and if you look back in their lineage their father or their mother or their uncle somewhere up the line used to have that kind of anger so you find that this anger has been passed down you know the first time when when we were actually talking about it <clears throat> and he mentioned that that was so it was so interesting to me because my perspective was always that it was classical conditioning, okay? <laughs> Psychology classes. I don't, know, I don't even know if it was I don't know if it was called classical conditioning, but I remember it was conditioning conditioning at the, of of some sort. So I'm not sure if it, it was specifically classical. So um so for me my assumption was for example if somebody has is like very hot tempered, yeah? Yes. It was something that they saw their parents. Maybe you saw your dad, you saw your mom, like be very angry. Yes. Like I remember in my in my situation, if I can give myself as an example, mm -hmm. growing up, we my dad was really hot tempered. So, um, it was something that subconsciously, and I, I that's what I thought. I thought either subconsciously or consciously, we keep we pick up certain traits like the one for anger and being so hot tempered and you know just something small happens and then you just blow up out of nowhere as your first reaction as something that you have seen happen like mm -hmm. me i had seen it happen over and over again for years in my life mm -hmm. so to the point that when we got kids and i remember because at that time i was a stay-at-home mom and then ian was the breadwinner of everything it was crazy because and I always say this to people who say, you know what? Oh, how is having kids? Oh my gosh, how is having kids? Oh, it's amazing. Flowers and roses. I'm like, no, it is a, <laughs> it is a mental thing. And I always say that. And I remember 
at that point when I was, I felt alone. Yes, you you're there, but you've gone to work, so it's just me mm. and these two little two babies. And I, I need to wash clothes, and I need to prepare supper, and I'm still thinking about um how my life is turning out. And my folks keep calling me like, "What are you? What are you doing about your life? You know, like what is the plan? I don't got a plan. I don't know why you guys are asking me. I just want to breastfeed." And get through the day, you know. Yeah. So I remember in those in those in those times and in those situations, often I would get so angry, you know, like uh, Blake or Blair would do something, and I would just be like, <sighs> you know. Right now it looks comical, but at that point, mm. it wasn't, mm. and I had to actually catch myself and realize that you know what, just because this is something that you have seen, because it came so naturally to me, and that's the worst thing about um about certain behaviors that we pick up along the way they sometimes when you do it over and over again as you said it becomes a habit yes. and it becomes now part of your behavior and part of your character so I, I would get angry and then i would feel bad when i would see them like look at me in fear and i'd be like no like that's how it used to be for me like i i don't want that to be the same thing for the kids mm. so that's what i thought i always thought that um certain traits and uh behaviors like you know being hot tempered or being um an overspender you know like certain small small things mm. i thought that it was just only i didn't think it would be that it, it was genetic i thought it was only something that you could you were classy you were conditioned yes. by repetitively watching or seeing mm. a person who is in your life do over and over again mm. yeah um you have gone to the second stage of it so um the second stage of our thoughts are passed down to people the, um, the first one is genetics and there's things like anger which can be passed down there there is unforgiveness which can pass down like wow. that there is just a general happiness which can be passed down like how rain is happy is the same way you are happy yeah. I'm happy. I'm yeah. Joy. Although, although I'm his is so like happy. amplified, that baby is like happy anytime. Just wakes up like, just like I'm ready for the day. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then there is um, the second one is now socialization, okay. and socialization is either what you're actively taught or what you learn from your environment just by observation. observation so you observe that your parent is angry and you also absorb it like you see you see it so often it becomes normal to you you accept it and becomes a part of you and that is what you exude in certain situations because that is what has been in your environment mm. and as you grow up you tend to have people around you who come to understand that that's who you are but really it's something that you learn and you can also unlearn that thing. True. And then there is, now that is in, um, in the home setting before you go out to, let's say, school or church. So in school, you can learn things in class or even um, from your other friends or classmates, associates, acquaintances about what their kind of life is like how they perceive things in the world mm -hmm. how they think and you come to pick some thoughts from there and they become yours also you own them so okay. let's say for example you're in school and you guys start chatting about how in your house you put your phones in a certain place when you come in the house so that you you all have a family time mm. and then you take that home with you and you say okay maybe, maybe i'm gonna put my phone over there okay. and then you tell other people and then this becomes your thought also so this is something that you have been you have copied other people mm. you've been socialized into yeah okay by association mm. and then there's church where you guys um study the bible and whoever is leading you their doctrine becomes yeah. how you perceive the world and how you um, basically becomes your biblical worldview. Mm. And um, that can differ from person to person depending on who the spiritual authority is in that particular church setting. Mm. And then um, as you grow up also, there's a point that you've gathered all these things and you start rearranging them. And I usually say that once you get to maybe 16, 18, you stop being raised by your parents and you start raising yourself. Mm. So you've gathered all this information and you rearrange them, you delete some, you add others and it becomes now these are your thought processes and these become your beliefs and these become your culture. Mm. And so 
remember that all these things started from a thought mm-hmm. somebody expressed theirs and so all this comes down to now actions behavior culture habits habits personality character yeah all this start from thoughts and that's why thoughts have to be studied and they have to be guarded because as the bible says in proverbs 23 that as a man thinketh in his heart so, so is he as he thinketh in his heart so is he and then so whatever you come up with inside here is what you exude but ultimately because yeah. that forms your habits your character your personality yeah so it's basically telling you the building blocks of someone make up the whole person mm. yeah okay so basically that's it about the power of thoughts in how they are created and how people become who they are okay um i once had now it's bringing it now to the to the spiritual side of you know the origin of thoughts i once had a friend of mine a few years ago tell me um you know something something what did she tell me she told me she told me you know she told me something about like her being broke and her you know she she just thinks of herself as broke and you know nothing that she no business or nothing that she does usually ever succeeds, you know. And she 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 mentioned something that really stood out for me. Ali Nambia, she told me, <laughs> so we can, you know, get out of the audiences. She told me, um, you know, even in my mind, it, it doesn't seem like I'm smart. Like she perceived in her thoughts that she wasn't smart, that she was foolish. So that's what she automatically translated to herself, yeah? Mm-hmm. So that brings me to the spiritual aspect of thoughts. Thoughts can also be your own subconscious. Yes. Let's say, for example, we go, we watch a movie, right? Yes. You see how somebody cuts an avocado. Mm-hmm. You know, something so subtle, something so, you know, irrelevant. It's not like the main plot. It's not like the movie. main plot, yeah. but that, that gets into your subconscious. And then tomorrow you go and buy an avocado, mm-hmm. and then... You find you yourself it's cutting, cut like, that, cutting yeah. like this. You yeah. understand? So that's something that we have picked up from our environment. Mm. Um, there's also our own thoughts. Like when you're thinking about business, when you're thinking about, um, you know, family, just general things in your life. Mm. There's a way that you perceive that maybe you can be able to think like this and do this to be able to come up with a solution, right? Yes. So that's personal from your subconscious, either environmentally or from your own. Mm -hmm. And then there's now from God, obviously, from the Holy Spirit, who, again, can be subconscious. Mm -hmm. You know, like when you read the Bible or when you listen to a sermon and then something sticks out to you, and then later on you find a situation Mm -hmm. where you didn't even remember that Bible verse, but you acted according to the thought that was provoked because of that Bible verse or that teaching. Mm. And then later on, when you sit down and you think about it, you're like, hey, yeah, how, how, how come I did that? And then you remember that mm. there's a sermon that you had or there's, you know, a scripture that you read that mm. became now your thought, you know? Yes. So it can either be that or even just audible, audible speaking, like, you know, you... You know, like the way people usually talk about voices in their head. Yes. Like the Holy Spirit can talk to you audibly. Yes. Um, and then now there's the other aspect of now the devil. Mm. And now the devil and the enemy comes up with, you know, negative thoughts. He'll tell you, you know what, you're broke. You know what, you're not beautiful. You know what, you're... Never amount to you anything. never amount to anything. Like the little lies that, that you know, mm. he tells. And then this is the thing that I want you guys to remember. Whenever the devil um, or evil thoughts come to you, they don't come as, oh... I am the devil, and I want you to know that you are broke. No, <laughs> he'll never come like that. He'll always come with the I. So he says, I mm-hmm. am broke, or mm-hmm. I am this. Mm-hmm. So you end up thinking that it's actually your thought, but it's not. Yes. Because he is a master of, you know, he's, he's, he's a... He's a spirit that has lived for so long. So he understands human, being. human human behavior. And he understands that if he comes like that, you would automatically know that that's not you. But if he comes with the I, mm. the I am sick, the I am broke, you would automatically think that it's your thought, even though it's not your thought. Mm. Yeah. So it's a very, it's a very thin line. And it's so, so important to be able to know the distinction between your own thoughts, thoughts that come from God, and also thoughts that come from the enemy. Yes. Yeah. Um, when it, there's another, there's another lady as she was, she was growing up, mm. she used to have self-destructive thoughts, thoughts that tell her, um, slit your wrists. Yeah. 
then there are thoughts that were telling her you should just be like she should just be a boy mm. just become a boy mm. just change your gender mm. change change um go to the doctor see something change your hormones do yeah. hormonal therapy mm. and she, it was on epic news live and mm. and then they said she said that i used to hear these voices in my head to tell me mm. to change my gender and all that time they kept on came coming 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 until she started seeing herself as a boy yeah. until she realized that these are actually not my thoughts yeah that i'm actually hearing voices in my head telling me to do things yeah and um br- that brings me to to a certain um this is a it's a sensitive topic just like the one i've just mentioned mm. there is um, a revelation that um, i received from a certain prophet and he talked about suicide and he said that when police investigate a suicide mm. there is usually a suicide note one of the major things that can tell you that this is a suicide is that there's a note from the person and then there is you'll find the body of the person mm-hmm. and you will find um probably one set of fingerprints or activity from only one person surrounding the death of that person but what you don't see or what they don't see is that suicide is not an activity of one particular entity mm. but spirits yeah which have led someone to do things so spiritually it's a murder mm. it's not a suicide yeah so let's say you saw one person going into the forest with a rope and nobody came out mm. if you look at it spiritually there are several spirits that went into the forest yeah. and one was left there never came out and that's what we usually think that um someone can go into a suicidal depression or into suicidal mode and they eventually take their own life and we think that all these were their thoughts mm. even that last note that they wrote these are not their original thoughts yeah. all these things have been led they have been led to such a point yeah and um it comes to what you've just spoken about regarding um discernment of spirits mm. And, and discernment of thoughts discernment of thoughts yeah that you should know how god speaks which means if you want to know how god speaks then you have to spend time in the word to know the character of god mm. you may not figure him out completely because he is a very complex being yeah um beyond our comprehension, human comprehension. beyond human comprehension but he says your thoughts Are not, are not my, my thoughts. thoughts and he's not like he's flexing on you yeah. he's telling you you need to have my thoughts yeah. in you yeah. because in the new testament we are told that we have the mind of christ yes so now he was saying your thoughts are not my thoughts and now he's given you his thoughts now you have the mind of christ yeah. and then um after you another the next level now is to spend more time with god that mm. you can hear his voice and he can hear you and you guys can speak yeah. and you get to know each other but there's something special about it is that you should not box god in a certain way mm. like let's say you've seen um people usually say um god is always in a still small voice yeah that's only one aspect that elijah happened to I hear experience, to yeah. experience but there was a fire and there there was uh, the whirlwind yeah but if you look at the book of Job he didn't come as a still voice he, he came, came as in the a whirlwind yeah. yeah he came in, in the whirlwind is where the voice of god was yes. when he when he comes to the children of israel he comes down in the thunder and, and the lightning, thunder lightning and the yeah. fire and the and the shaking of you know mm. yeah, the other sounds and 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 the cloud by day and the fire by night yeah. so if you put him in a box let's say you are waiting for that still small voice The person next to you is a god carrier. The born again individual next to you is the god carrier, is god under cover. Yeah. So if they Ooh, speak to you, god under cover, like the That's <laughs> proper angel. Ah, like so that. um if they speak to you mm-hmm. and they tell you a certain truth about your situation, mm-hmm. and you don't hear them and you're expecting god to tell you i mean god just spoke to you yeah but you looked at the person and did it did not decipher that it's god in them speaking yeah and we tend to overlook some people 
not knowing that God speaks through people nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. And when he says that God speaks to us through his son, his son lives in us in the office of the Holy Spirit. Yes. So what we need to do is spend more time with God. That's actually we need to be more intentional yeah. about spending time with God and That's a lot of word. quiet time. Yeah. 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 Mm. I like that. And there are so many ways that God can use to speak to us. And I like the fact that you also brought in the aspect of there are different ways. He can speak to us through an audible voice. He can speak to us through, you know, our thoughts. He can speak to us through people. He can speak to us through dreams, through visions, through the, the Bible as you read scripture. There are certain scriptures that can, you know, stand out to you and you really feel them deep within your spirit. Mm. And that's also another way. And there are so many ways, like the, there's so many other ways that you can't even exhaust all of them. Because again, as we said, God is such a complex being. Mm. Um, so also being open to, you know, the possibility that he could speak in any way mm. and be open to that is really, really important. But then begs the question um, of, you know, how do I differentiate and how do I know that it is actually God speaking to me and not the devil? Um I think you've already answered that. Like, spend time with God. You need to spend time um, in the Word of God, meditating, speaking to God in silence, without any music, without social media, just you spending time in the presence of God. Because the one thing, there's something uh, that somebody, it was a joke like a, a couple of years back. Um, somebody was asked, Mono, why did you do this? And he said, oh, the devil made me do it. And the, the Don was asking him, Asked him, how did you know it was a devil? You understand? Mm -hmm. And how you know it's God or how you know it's a devil is the more you keep spending time with the specific God, because yes. the devil is also, you know, a father of, a God of, this world. You know, of darkness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the, whoever you choose to spend your time with, you will, you will, you're going to become familiar to their voice. There's certain situations where... If you know the word, even if somebody comes, even if a prophet, maybe a false prophet or a, or a false teacher comes and tells you, you know what? Oh, God has told me you go and let's say jump off a cliff. You know, even if, even if, even if he calls himself or he's called a man of God, you know that that's not something that God would say, would say because God says that, you know, we are to, he, he's going to give us life. Yeah. and life abundantly mm. so there are certain aspects that you're going to understand and you're going to know i know god really god said that it's going to co co completely contradict with um, what scripture says and what you know about god because the amazing thing about spending time in a personal intimate relationship with god is just like your the way you spend time with you know your family member mm. or your father mm. you get to know things about them one of the one of the things that um I really felt bad and I really regretted when my mom passed away was that I had just started learning about her. And I used to ask my sisters, like, what's her favorite color? Like, what does she like? Like, what's her favorite food? Where does she like to go? You know, like intimate details that you know because you've spent time with somebody. Mm -hmm. And the same thing applies to God. You know, when we always say that, you know, God wants to be involved in the most intimate things. He wants to, he wants you to ask him like, God, what do you think? Which suit do you think I should wear today? Which shoes? Like, you know, like the way you would talk to a friend, that's mm -hmm. exactly how we should talk to God. And that's not to say that, you know, we are, we are looking at him from or lowering his level from, from that perspective, but having that intimate relationship where we understand that God wants to be involved in everything. Oh, your exams yes. <clears throat> feel yeah. hard. Yeah. Pray about it and tell him, hey, God, you know. I really need to pass this. Please help me. Or even when you're going farming and you say, hey, God, mm -hmm. I need you to help me to be able to plant these crops well. Or just the small intimate things. And it varies from person to person. Yeah. So that's how you know that um, it's God speaking to you. It's no, nobody, can, nobody can come and tell you um, a certain thing and it be 100% accurate if you for mm -hmm. yourself don't know. You know, you need yeah. to know the yeah. word. Yeah. You by yourself, not just... Not just listening to preachings. Mm. There was another um, reel, and I think it was by uh, Joyce Meyer, and she was saying, "Don't let, don't let, um, what's it called, sermons and preaching replace you spending time with God." Hey, that's dangerous. Don't it happens. And yeah, don't know, listen to preaching, good. and and you know it's good to listen mm. to that, but don't let that replace you actually spending time in the Word of God. You mm. actually meditating and sitting down and speaking to Him. And you know, crying your heart, heart out, and just listening to his voice and listening what to what he has and his purpose in your life. Let that not replace it. Mm. Yeah. 
<coughs> so in the same way that we talk about that the same applies to the devil you know the more you spend time with him the more you are you have a rebellious spirit then the more you know that certain thoughts are of the devil because you know his character you know he's the father of lies you know that he might try and take a truth but he'll you know twist it and manipulate it to his benefit mm. so the more you spend time with a specific entity whether it's the spirit of god or the spirit of darkness or evil mm. that will really determine who it is that you follow because even the bible says that you cannot have two gods you can you only serve one and the other one you you hate you hate yeah yeah um there's um there's a way that <coughs> our generation has really let's say not the the current the three dominant generations right now the millennials the gen z's and the they is called gen alpha alpha is it, yeah. is it before the millennials gen z is uh, the alpha is after gen z, is after gen z. okay yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. so the three have really been influenced by entertainment the music and the movies that have been in during our lifetime mm -hmm. you will find that um as i was telling you the other day if you if you listen to the tunes on the adverts that they're doing on youtube yeah they are the muse they are the kind of songs that we used to listen to when we were younger yeah. and so we are prone to pay more attention to that particular advert mm -hmm. and then we find ourselves buying it yeah um the themes that are being that have been pushed in the last 10 to 15 years are what's they are the things which are mainstream right now and they are just being subtly mentioned mm -hmm. The movies then the series that we used to watch maybe like from 10 years ago are the things which are mainstream and the things which are being fought right now so much that they're demanding attention. Things that we shouldn't be speaking out in public like bedroom things are the ones which are now on the streets because they were being subtly mentioned as just planting thoughts and mm -hmm. thoughts until thoughts have become actions and now actions have become movements out on the street. Yeah. And so if you, you have to really watch the things that you're watching yeah. and you have to analyze them and see them for what they are and to actually call them out and say, I can see what you guys are bringing here. And that is not something that I am going to be a part of. And even the spirit behind it. Absolutely, because yes. Because all each and every agenda has a specific has a spirit, spirit behind, behind it, it yeah. whether it is good or whether it is evil. There yes. is a spirit behind it. Yeah. And that's one of the things that a lot of people don't understand about um, just life in general, that there is a spiritual aspect to every single thing. Mm. Or somebody gets a, a, an accident, there is a spiritual aspect to it. Mm. Or somebody gets sick, there is a spiritual aspect to it. Or somebody is successful, there is a spiritual aspect to it. Mm. And I think it's 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 foolishness for anybody to sort of um, pretend that that doesn't, doesn't exist or that that is not a part of our reality because spirits are present you know and mm. they are you know thriving mm. so it is up to us to be able to be knowledgeable and to be able to take into account what each and every spirit um has and the agenda behind it so that we can be able to knowledgeably and you know with understanding and with wisdom to be able to dissect it and to be able to deal with it um i wanted to talk about now renewal of your mind yeah so basically we we are new creatures and when we say new creatures usually when you speak about being born again and you wonder which part of you is born again so a, a man is divided into spirit soul and, and body, body yeah. so the spirit is the one which is reborn mm. Um, that made new yeah the soul is something that we have to work on yeah. in order to reflect the spirit that is born again yeah. and then the body is something that will be renewed yeah. so the part that of ourselves that we have to renew is the soul which is made up of your mind mm. your will your emotions your intellect your imagination mm. and all those things have to be renewed and then they have to be renewed according to the word of god yeah according to the thoughts of god and what he speaks or what he says yes. And it is important for you to have this kind of view that is biblical and that is godly in order for you to have healthy 
thoughts. Mm. You remember the ladies that we used to watch on Faith TV, Dr. Michelle? Yeah. Dr. Michelle talked about how your thoughts are like a tree. Yeah. And if, if they are nice thoughts, they look like a beautiful tree with nice flowers. Yeah. But evil thoughts are like the fangs of a snake and yeah. they drop venom. Yeah. And th that kind of venom, as it keeps on dropping in your body, it forms diseases. Mm -hmm. It's true. By the way, um, for what he's talking about, go search uh, Dr. Michelle Faith TV. I think, I, I don't remember the panel of women. It was a panel of five women in different seasons. I think I'll look for it and then I'm going to put the title down below. Please, guys, um, watch it. I know it was initially meant especially for women because it's a woman panel. Mm. But there's so many nuggets, whether you're a male or a female, you go... It's 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 just amazing and it just talks about the power of our thoughts and the power of our words in different sections. So mm -hmm. yeah, but mm -hmm. that was hey, that was powerful. Uh, it's, uh, for real, we learned so much from those ladies. Yeah, it's it's just amazing how thoughts can actually affect your health. Yeah, if you keep on thinking weird things and bad things, like for example, um, <clears throat> we know unforgiveness can lead to cancer. Yes and and things like diabetes yeah. and high blood pressure especially when let's say you are having stressful thoughts your blood pressure rises yeah so it's just so if you change how you think then your blood pressure stabilizes and yeah. you feel like your heart stops pumping that fast because when you have anger it's just pumping in you it's what, just, that's what they say you have a lot of bile yeah so even your thoughts affect how much bile is being produced in your body yeah it's, and it's actually scientific if you actually do some research uh, mm. between uh, sicknesses and health of the body and the mind and the soul and the spirit mm. there is a direct it's, it's correlation too direct actually it's it's amazing i think um this is something that our people need to look into so much. We have differences in how we think in this generation, and I'm sure even in the previous generation and mm -hmm. the coming generations, but we have a responsibility to change things for this, uh, for our own sake, and for the ones which are coming, the children that we are raising. Yeah. It's important for us to change how we think, and we need to have a biblical worldview because... It's the only one that is going to guarantee victory. Yeah. Victory there, is already it's is already won. Yes. Yeah. It's, there is no two ways about it. We have to be serious about it. Mm -hmm. And um, there is a chance of being brainwashed. But what we have to do is to analyze. And that's where a relationship with God comes. We have to analyze the things that we get. Be like the Bereans. You give, you're given scripture. However you interpret it, you take it and then you go back home and also digest. Yeah. What did he say? What did he mean? Mm. And is there another way that this can be also understood? God help me to understand. Yeah. Do not lean on your own understanding. So, but lean on every word that comes out of the mouth of the Lord. Mm. And that's how, that's... <sighs> I, 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 feel, I feel like thoughts are just a major thing. And it's so important um, to always pray for the spirit of discernment. It's it's a spirit that has been talked about in the Bible um, so many times. And basically the spirit of discernment is, is a spirit that can help you be able to cut across. So, you know, like that, the saying of sheep in wolf's clothing. Yes. But wait, what? Sheep in wolf's clothing? Wolves, wolves, in, wolves sheep's in sheep's clothing. clothing. <laughs> I, was like, yes. I was like, what? <laughs> wolves in sheep's clothing yeah. so for example if you imagine you looking at a wolf but it's actually really dressed in sheep's clothing like mm. everything about it looks like a sheep okay mm -hmm. the spirit of discernment is able to actually guide you and show you that even though it might look like a sheep yes. even though everything about it looks sheepish mm. under it mm. there is actually a wolf there is mm. actually a dangerous animal so even as you read the Bible, even as you interact with people, even as you get into social situations where sometimes um, you don't know you don't know the kind of people that you're going to meet and you don't know um, how to even behave or how to even interact or even how to inspire them mm. to scripture. Always pray for the spirit of discernment because God will always show you that um, that way that you're supposed to go. And he'll, he'll always tell you, you know what, instead of this, do this. Mm. And oftentimes... You might not understand why exactly God is telling you to do something. In your own human capacity, you don't understand. Mm. But you, because you have spent time with him, because you know the person who knows the beginning from the end, mm. you know the person. You know, have you ever had those situations where you hear people say, oh man, I was so annoyed because, you know, my Uber was late or because I got late for something. And then 
later on in the day they realize that actually by them being late there's something, they there's something that they avoided either mm. it be it an accident or be mm. it you know a rope just whatever it is so let's always remember that god's thoughts are bigger than our thoughts god's yeah. ways are better than our ways yeah. so always leaning on him for understanding mm. the most amazing thing is not you being able to figure out or being you being able to know everything about everything about how how it's going to be in 10 years and five years and and you know because i know that there's that anxiety that comes about and it riddles so many people's thoughts the most important thing is for you to remember that even though you don't know how it is going to be Kesho or 10 years from now or 30 years from now, mm. you know the person who knows. So don't lean on your own understanding. Trust in him in everything. Give him thanks. Give him praise. And remember that he is a good father. He is a faithful father. There is no father who is as good as God. Even our earthly fathers, they have fallen short so many times. So don't compare God to your earthly father. Like he's a good father. Like, you know, you know, like... That father who just wants to have everything, like he just, you know, he desires so much to give us each and everything and for us to be able to live abundant lives. Mm -hmm. But until we know, until we have the knowledge and the wisdom, because the Bible says that my people lack because of lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. So it's all that is not given you power over those thoughts. And by the way, that that's one of the ways that you can be able to, to, to combat such thoughts. The Bible says that take every thought under captivity each and every thought mm. take it under captivity and what does that mm. mean you think about something maybe maybe the thought says slit your wrist your, your wrist your wrists take that thought under captivity like put it in jail put it in jail first and then analyze mm. okay this thought number one where is it coming from mm. can this come from the bible no because our god is a loving father mm. and he desires for us to live and to live abundantly so mm. this cannot be from him mm. so you automatically understand that it's from the devil and then analyze what is the spirit behind it and what is the intention or the agenda behind it yes. and in that way by you taking each and every thought captive under the authority of jesus christ you're able to know and to understand that you know what this one is not mine and what i always like to do is don't just think it after you think about that thought after you after you've taken it uh, captive under the authority of christ jesus after you've analyzed and you've discerned that this is not from from you know god you have to speak against it you have to speak because there is power in your words so always say i rebuke that thought and i refuse that thought in the mighty name of jesus christ because our words are a spirit as well they are power so when they go out they also go out and fight you understand what i mean yes. so don't just think it and say i know apana speak and say no even when you have bad dreams and, and especially when you have children because there are certain times when we maybe uh, 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 one of the kids come and say, you know, I had a bad dream. We are we are teaching and we have taught them that when that happens, you have to speak and you have to take authority over it because you are not a victim. Mm -hmm. You are not helpless. God has given you each and every resource that you need. So take that under captivity and mm -hmm. say, no, I rebuke that thought in the mighty name of Jesus. That is not God's thought. God only has good thoughts for me. I have the mind of Christ and keep, mm. you know, that, that renewal, when we talk about renewing, mm. it's you, <sighs> there's, there's an analogy that um, somebody told me and I thought it was so, so beautiful. He said, whenever we do wrong, you know, let's say we've, we've done wrong to God or we've disobeyed him or something tomorrow when the day ends tomorrow, when God wakes up, he doesn't see you in the light of a sinner. He sees you as brand new. You understand what I mean? For the masses of God are renewed every morning. Every single morning. So you ha you you think about it like that. Mm. In the same way, in the same way that God sees you fresh every morning, even though you you've been you know smoking and drinking and doing whatever it is that you've been doing, yeah. that you know He is pushing you out of. In the morning, He sees you in a new light, and that's the exact same way that we should renew our minds. Not to say that even when you when you are fallen short, that now hey no that's it for you. That's it for no, me. Yeah. No. Tomorrow you wake up and you mm -hmm. try again. I love mm -hmm. this this mantra that is going around of, you know what, tomorrow we try again. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow you try again. Even if you fail today, tomorrow you try again mm -hmm. and you renew, renew your mind. How do you renew your mind? You read the scripture. You spend time in the word of God. You keep speaking and you keep saying, I, I usually even say, I have the mind of Christ. I have the mind of Christ. Yes. I have the thoughts of Christ. Yes. You speak that over yourself. Words are so, so important because they're not just things that, it's not just bare air that goes out of our mouths no mm. it's actually spirit that goes out and it performs each and everything that we have sent it to have to perform so if you say you're broke okay 
If you're gonna be broke, if you say you're rich, rich yeah. let me tell you, it doesn't matter even if you have negative five million in your account, you keep saying I am rich. Yes. I am a millionaire, I am mm. a multimillionaire, my money is money with a mission. Mm. So keep speaking according to the way God says. Mm. According to the way God sees you, according to the revelation that you get from the word of God, because ultimately our thoughts translate and become, as you said, mm. who we are. So whatever a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So is he. In the <clears throat> and when you're talking about um the words are spirit, and Jesus said, My words are spirit and, and they, they are life. life. Yeah. And he was referring to not just it's not just his own words, but he's saying the words that we speak, yeah. they are spirit and they are life. alive. They are alive. They every word that you have ever spoken is out there doing what you it said it should do it doesn't matter if it takes five years it's or two going years to or happen. two days it's yes it's the thing about spirits is that they are focused they are going to achieve whatever is in their dna yeah so if you say i am broke I am broke is out there as a sentence. Making looking for sure, ways, looking for ways every to make way sure to you're make sure broke, you're broke because that's the life. You take your in. money to prevent money coming, coming from you yeah. to kill your opportunities. But if you say I am rich, I am rich is out here looking for opportunities to come to you to bring you money, going into people's heads and minds and and businesses to make sure that they bring you opportunities. I am wealthy, bring you opportunities to grow your money. To bring you opportunities to give you to in fact to even bring you good ideas yeah and these these ideas are usually out here and i am wealthy is just collecting them just, and yeah. bringing them to you saying, yeah i have an idea and if you find that people who usually say i am wealthy more often they have more and more ideas mm -hmm. compared to people who are i am broke i am broke yeah and and this is all about how you're thinking yeah. because whatever you say you've thought it first so if you arrest your thoughts before they come out of your mouth you'll be able to say different things like you think something you're like mm -mm. you say the opposite yeah. so that you can build yeah. a spirit that is going to kill any word that has come up against you yeah. like the, the, the way the bible says in Isaiah 54 no weapons formed against, against us shall prosper and every tongue that rises up against us shall condemn in judgment, judgment yeah. and you see when he talks about weapons which have been formed against us, the next verse he talks about tongues which have risen. Yes. So th these tongues are the weapons, the weapons which have been formed. Yes, the words that have been spoken. Mm. But none of them shall prosper because you will condemn them in judgment. Otherwise, if you don't condemn them, these weapons they are meant to there. prosper. Yeah. And how, how do you condemn them? With your tongue. You have With to speak words. against them. You yes. have to condemn Kapsa and tell them you will never function against yeah. me. And even if you ever said I'm broke before, you say I am not broke. You can you cancel, can those, cancel words. those words. And you have to keep on... Yeah. Words can only be killed by, by other uh, words. More you powerful to, than yeah, that. Yeah, you have yeah. to keep on... And always remember that good will always trump Trumpy. evil. Yeah. So you keep on saying the good things. I love what you've said that words cancel other words because here we have somebody maybe um wondering you know me i've been speaking i'm broke i'm broke i'm broke and you know how how do i do it <clears throat> now just keep now start renewing your mind and now start um there's a there's a devotional that we i i read a few days ago and it said when when you have a specific thought God doesn't command us to get rid of that, that thought. He commands us to replace that thought. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had... Okay, let me not look at that analogy. So instead of you thinking about you completely removing that thought, think about replacing it. And how do you replace it? You replace it by instead of saying, I am broke, you keep saying, I am rich. Let me tell you, it doesn't matter if you mm -hmm. feel it. Mm -hmm. We don't... We are, we are, we're not controlled mm -hmm. by our let feelings. Let the poor say, I am rich. Let the poor let say, the I am rich. Say, say, I am strong. Yes. So you keep saying it and you keep saying it mm -hmm. and it becomes your habit. One of the most amazing testimonies um, that I have experienced is now in the car. And if you guys haven't watched that video, there's a, a video we've done on, on the testimony of how we got our first car. And we just kept saying it, guys. You know, we had gotten this concept. We had had these pictures. We had gotten so attuned into the word. Maka, we were like, okay, sour. You know, if it works for them and they have jets, it's going to work for us because yes. God is not a respecter of persons. Mm -hmm. So we kept saying, thank you, God, for our car. Thank you, God, for our car. That day, that time, we were actually living car. in front, behind the slums, in front, like we were the bordering slum was the right slum. behind us. We were yeah. the border. We were the border. <laughs> <laughs> so imagine, you have, 
you have negative in your bank account but you're over there saying thank you god for our car where's the car we've not seen it but we don't care mm. the bible said we we speak what we want to see happen and uh, that the the, the, the the words are spirit and that they are life so we kept speaking it yeah. we kept saying thank you god for our car when we would go um and be in town and there are no matatus because julie's a strike wear and we are being rained on by just like thank you god for our thank car <laughs> Even when we started looking um, for other houses when we wanted to move from that place, we used to we used to go and ask um, the Wachis um, and the caretakers like, "Do you guys have parking? parking do you have for park- two cars? Okay, but two cars. Do you even have one car? Yeah, do you even have the zip zip for your one car? So my one car. Ah, that one is no, no, no. We want two cars. <laughs> <laughs> and we kept repetitively saying it. Mm. You have to get to a point, and um, I'm gonna say this in conclusion. You have to get to a point where you speak words, and you and you. Whatever you speak is what you believe. You know, like the way, um, and I always use this as an example. What color is this? It's green. This is green. Yeah. Color. This is no green. green. <laughs> Guys, what color is this? So black. Okay, it has like green height. Okay, let's use your hat so that we don't. Uh, that get... one is even worse. What color are you seeing? Yellow. Is one mustard? Okay, L- let's say mustard. It's a yellow. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. Higher. Orange. Wow. <laughs> So guys, get to the point mm-hmm. where you know that this heart is yellow, yes? Mm-hmm. So if somebody comes and tells you that this heart is black, obviously you look at them like, what are you talking about? Why? Because you know that you know that you know that you know in your heart and in your spirit and in your oblangata that this is yellow, right? So you have to get to a point where you know yourself to the point that even when the devil comes up with a lie, even when the devil comes up with things that he says, you know, um, against you, that, you know, you'll never amount to anything. Oh, your father was a drug addict. Oh, even you are going to be a drug addict. Oh, you're the worst mother. Oh, you, whatever lies that he comes and puts up against you, you have to be in the word and renew your mind constantly to for you to get to the point where you believe and you know whatever God says about you is true. So mm-hmm. if God says that you're rich, you're rich. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't matter if somebody comes and tells you this is black. You mm-hmm. know that you know that you know that you know without a shadow of a doubt that this is yellow. Mm-hmm. So getting to that point is really, really important. And I know we can't exhaust um, this topic. Yeah, it's long. Yeah. yeah, it's long. But it's. I, I hope this was... Um, a blessing to you guys and also an encouragement for you to mm. not just think and think that any any thought is your own, but for you to actually take each and every thought captive and for you to actually dissect it and think, is this thought my own? Because we live in a society where there are so many people struggling with mental illness, with depression, with suicidal thoughts. Mm. Um, and it's all in your mind. Guys, if there's anything that you can take away from this video, the battle is always here. When the devil wants to attack you, he, he starts with here. Yeah. He starts with your thoughts. He starts with, you know what, you're sick. Oh, you have cancer. You, you're going to die, by the way. Mm. No. So you have to take each and every thought captive. You say, no. Even though the doctor's report says that I am sick, I know that I am healed by his stripes. And not, I am going to be past tense. I am, I am already healed. healed. It, is, it has done. already been done. Yeah. Because Jesus is not coming to die again. Mm to give us any of these things. All of mm. these things have been given to us. So it's up to us to appropriate them. Appropriate, um, and I always like that word. It's um, Pastor Westhoys. Pastor Nikki. Nick yes, Pastor Nikki said, yes. you have to appropriate it. And appropriate it means like like violently grab it. You know, yes. like the way you know something is yours and you violently and grab it. And someone's trying to take it from And someone you. is trying yeah, to take it from yeah. you. You have to violently violently grab it. Yeah. Grab each and every blessing. Grab each and every gift that has already been provided to you mm. because everything that God has given us is a gift. So he has presented it to us like this. So it's up to us to take it or not to take it. But the gifts are already there. So it's up to you to choose whether you're going to take it or not. My people perish because of lack of knowledge please do not perish because of lack of knowledge Mm. each and everything that you need to know each and every answer that you need is in the bible it might not seem like it it might seem like it's such an old testament thing and oh my gosh you're talking about moses and frogs and (laughs) i don't know what but literally you can get each and every revelation um from the word of god so i hope this episode was an encouragement to you guys Mm -hmm. um and i hope you learned a thing or two Mm. Um, even in this journey called life and please let us know which other episodes you would like us to do um final words i, I think we've concluded like twice we've become pastors <laughs> pastors <laughs> two, five more, more minutes. two more minutes 
I'm, I'm finishing. I'm finishing. But the word of God is so sweet. Yeah, like, so you have to keep going. And um, for me, final words is change your thoughts. Yeah. Um, you your mind, use the but... word of God. The word of God is a sh- is sharper than any two edged sword. Yeah. And it's a discerner of the thoughts of hearts of men. Yes. And it's there are a few words that I've left out in the big in the middle there, but. Use the word of God to discern your own thoughts and even other people's thoughts. Yeah. And what is this guy saying? Where is he trying to go with this? What is his inspiration? Change your mind and change your life. Yeah. Change your speech. Yeah. Change your life. It all mm. starts with the thoughts. So if you want to change your life, if you want to change your character, if you want to change who you are, the kind of life that you live, it all starts with your thoughts. Yeah. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching and we will see you on our next episode. Shalom. Oh, I miss. Okay, yes. Miss Rabbit. Shalom. Bye, guys.